In this episode, we're going to look at two, basically two of the components that you have available in Tinkercad. The first one is a multimeter. It's called a multimeter because you can, like a real meter, like a real meter, I can take and select whether I want to measure volts, amps, or ohms. In this case, you select a multimeter and then you click on a little button that says, I want to measure volts, amps, or resistance. The other components that we're going to look at are resistors, both variable resistors and fixed resistors. These are things that you need to know. This is tedium. This is tedious learning, but the more you understand about the components that you have to use in Tinkercad, the more successful you're going to be. And you can go back and watch these again later. Okay, we start off with the multimeters. The first components that we're going to look at is the multimeters. And the multimeter can be set as a amperage or current meter, which would be the one to the right that has the A highlighted right here. And it says amps. And then a voltmeter has the V highlighted and resistor has the R highlighted. Okay, I have the simulation turned on, turn it off, turn it on. And I have a switch in here that allows me to switch the light bulb in and out of the circuit. The first thing I want you to notice is that the ohmmeter says mega, which means that right now it's saying infinite. So if I were to stop the simulation and pick this one, control C, control V, start the simulation, there's nothing hooked up here, and it says megaohms. Now, an ohmmeter has a battery in it, otherwise it can't measure resistance. And what it does is, it the when you have your meter in the ohmmeter function, it puts a DC voltage between the black and the red terminals right here. So I've hooked up a meter, a voltmeter, black to black, red to red, and it says, that this meter puts out one volt DC, and that's what it uses to measure resistance. And what it does is it puts out the one volt, and then inside of the meter, there's a circuit that looks at whatever voltage is measuring from here. This is the voltmeter, or this is the ohmmeter right here. So it's putting out one volt between the black and the red terminal to measure the resistance of this bulb. So if I switch the bulb into the circuit, now you see I've got one volt, see black, comes down here, goes through the switch, comes over here, goes through the meter, and can't, comes back up to the ohmmeter. And the voltmeter is measuring from the black to the red terminal on the ohmmeter. Now just for grins, I have two meters set in front of me, two digital volt ohm meters, real ones. And I hooked them up and I had them each measure the other's output voltage when it was in the resistor mode or the uh, resistance measuring mode. One of them, the Fluke, it is a Fluke 77. I've had it for a long time. It's, it's old. It puts out one, it puts out a half a volt, 0.5 or 500 millivolts. Okay, it puts out a half a volt and that's what it uses to measure resistance. The other meter, which is kind of a, a cheapy, it just said hold peak. I don't see a brand out. It says HP36C. That doesn't mean anything. It's an inexpensive thing I bought off probably Amazon or eBay. When I flipped the two meters around, so the fluke was measuring voltage, and this little blue meter was in the resistance reading, the fluke said that this little blue meter puts out a tenth of a volt. So the blue meter that I have in front of me, you can't see it. When you're trying to measure resistance, it uses 100 millivolts. And then it, it gets a sample of the current. So it puts 100 millivolts across the circuit to measure. And then however much current it gets from 100 millivolts, it does a calculation to determine the resistance. 
whereas the Fluke uses 500 millivolts and the meter in front of you on the screen uses 1,000 millivolts. At 1,000 millivolts, we're getting 20.8 milliamps or 0 0.0208 amps, 20.8 milliamps. So your meters that you have to use, I'll stop the simulation here, delete this one. We don't need that one. We'll just use these three. So when you're measuring resistance, the this meter, this virtual meter puts out one volt, thousand millivolts, one thousand thousandths of a volt. And at 48 ohms, it draws 20.8 milliamps. So in order to measure the resistance of this light bulb, this meter right here, this ohm meter, puts one volt across the me this light bulb and it gets 20.8 milliamps. And from that, it does a calculation inside the meter and says it's 48 ohms. So this is the characteristics of the meters that you're going to use. Now you could also make a note that the light bulb is 48 ohms. I think I mentioned that in another video. Now let's do resistors. A resistor is a, it's kind of a generic device that does, that has no function other than providing opposition to current flow. But resistors are used for millions of functions. So they're, they're one of the most common components in an electronic circuit. So what I've done here is I have all these ohmmeters, seven of them, and I have an ohmmeter across the light bulb, and we know that's 48 ohms, and then I have an ohmmeter across a variable resistor, and notice that the center conductor, the wiper, is not connected. And the basically the way a potentiometer works is it has whatever the resistance is, and see up here, I specified 250 ohms. I can make that potentiometer anything I want, but I made it 250 ohms just for a nice round value. So that means between the two outer leads, you have 250 ohms. And then the center pin is attached to a wiper arm that moves from one end to the other. And as it does, Although there's 250 ohms from here to here, when you move the wiper arm in this direction, then between the center and this side, it goes down to zero. And from this center to the other side, it goes up to 250, which we'll demonstrate here over here with this one. This is a 250 ohm resistor, and it should measure roughly, it should be identical to this one. Now I notice that there's a slight peculiarity that I got 251 ohms out of the potentiometer, even though I said it's 250. You can see right there. This is also a 250. I'm going to click on that resistor and you see I have it set for 250. Consequently, the color code, red, green, brown, and then it shows gold. That's a 5% tolerance which means that that resistor from the manufacturer will give you a fixed 250 ohms of opposition to current flow with a 5% tolerance. That means plus and minus 5%. So 5% of 250 is, I think, 12.5 maybe. So that means the resistance, and you can do the calculation yourself to see what 0 0.05 times 250 is. That means that that resistor from the manufacturer is going to give you 250 ohms plus and minus 5%. It's not a precision resistor. You can buy resistors that are 1% and even a half a percent. They're very precise. They're wire wound. This is really a carbon film resistor. Very cheap. I mean, they're less than pennies. Okay, so we have two identical potentiometers. And down here, I have two ohmmeters, each one across a 125 ohm resistor. And then I've got the two of them in series add up to 250 ohms. So to make that more realistic, I'm going to click on that, control C, control V. Whoops, I was, I was on the wrong item. 
control C, control V, and I'll bring it down here. I'm going to move this over, and this is positive. So it really doesn't matter because we're measuring resistance. So I don't want these circuits to interfere with each other. So I'm going to add a switch in one side of this. Now over here, I'm going to add a switch. I'll get a slide switch and I'll put it over here. Then I will rotate it to make it a little bit easier to install. And then I will come from this side of this meter up to here, from this side up to here. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the simulator. And you see it shows an error because this meter is interfering with these two. So I'll take that meter out of the circuit. And you see this is a 125 ohm resistor, 125 ohms. And I can tell by the color code, brown, orange, brown, that it's 125. Now, to keep these two meters from interfering with this one, I'll turn this back off. I'll turn it off. Then I'm going to stop the simulation. And then I'm going to take and duplicate this. Control C, Control V. Whoops, had the wrong thing selected. Select the switch, Control C, Control V. Now I'm going to move it up here. And I'm going to have to delete these two conductors. That's not very neat. It'll work though. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the simulation back on and notice that these two meters are switched in right now. If I turn that switch off, they are now measuring through both of them. So that didn't work. So now start the simulation. Both of these meters are switched out of the circuit. And this one switched out of the circuit. If I switch this one in, it measures 250 ohms. So it is measuring. Remember that an ohmmeter puts out, this particular one puts out one volt. So one volt DC comes out of here through the switch, through that resistor, through that resistor, and back over to the meter. So 225 ohm resistors in series add up to 250. If I take this one out and switch these in, it measures them separate. Okay, so this is a characteristic. If you're going to get real clever with your meters, you're going to, especially ohm meters, you have to be able to switch them in and out of the circuit. Okay, now let's go up here to this 250 ohm variable resistor. See, as I move it, nothing changes all the way from that side to that side because I have the wiper arm disconnected. This one, I have the wiper arm in the middle. So when I go over to this side, between this lead and this lead, I have zero ohms. And between this lead and this lead, I have 250. And as I swing it around, see, one increases and the other decreases until the other side is zero. Okay, this is a characteristic of resistance. A fixed resistor and a variable resistor. Now, this is just a note that I put in there. I'm going to delete it. Whoops, I had the wrong thing selected. I want to delete that note. I'm going to click on this resistor and notice it says 250. I'm going to make it, see if I can get away with this, 79 K ohms. Okay, I get 79,000 ohms. See the colors change to match. So when you pick a device, you can change the resistance to be anything you want. <clears throat> this color code here, I pretty much know the color code because a zillion years ago, I memorized it and I don't use it anymore, but I can still remember it's black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, white. So I remember the sequence. So black is zero and brown is one. So if I made this, and I don't think I can change this while I'm simulating, well, we'll find out. We'll make this one. Yep. See, brown is one and black is zero. So one zero, red is two. So that means one zero and two zeros, 1,000, 5%. So if I select this resistor and make it 17 ohms, 
Now you see it's, that's the closest it's going to get. I don't think that it will do 17 ohms. So eight is gray. Okay, one, eight, and then black for zero. So that means zero means zero, zero. So brown, gray, one, eight, and then black is the number of zeros that follow. And black is zero, so that's zero, zero. So it's one, eight ohms. Okay, when I made it 17, okay, that's violet. See, if you zoom in there real close, it looked brown to me, but it's actually violet. So it does do any value resistance that you want to put in there. Now let's say I pick, um, we'll go back to the simulation and we'll take and swing this around to one fourth as close as I can get it. It's not exactly right, but close enough. I'm going to change this to 500 and those numbers should double. Oh, when I did that, it bumped this back to one position. So you can make these potentiometers when you adjust them and you pick something like you make it 500 ohms. That's 500 ohms across the whole, the whole potentiometer. And then the swing arm here, the wiper, it moves between one end and the other end, increasing in one direction, decreasing in the other. I think that's good enough for resistors. There you have multimeters and resistors, both fixed and variable. That'll do it for this episode. I'm going to keep making little videos going through the components and then eventually we'll get back to doing circuits. When we get back to circuits, it's going to be series and parallel. If you don't know how to do the calculations for series and parallel circuits, you're not going to advance to really understand circuits. Thank you for watching.